Making people feel comfortable with you is your number one job as an agent, as a salesperson, as a human. This is what I believe. I'm sharing that with you for nothing. Just get out there and succeed. We're trying to convert, 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 and we're not connecting first. We gotta connect first and then convert, right? And the connection process, it could take one or two touches or it could take a hundred touches or it could take one conversation or it could take a year. Um, you don't really know. And so as a new agent or as you try to dive into the relationship over transaction philosophy of building your business, you know, it, it can be tough to understand when is the right time to ask them to buy or sell. And so it's something you have to learn through experience because every situation is different. Um, you know, every single prospect, every single deal is, is different. You're never gonna run across ever. It's, it's like a fingerprint. Every deal is, has its own fingerprint, its own circumstances, its own situations that you have to help the prospect through. And so how can we say that, you know, we're, we're gonna follow up exactly this way. We're gonna call them back, you know, the next day, send two text messages and within five days, you, you can't put it in a box and say, this is how you follow up every single time. We have to ask our prospects what they wanna do, if they have an agent, why they wanna do that. You know, when, what, if, and why. And when we get the answers to those questions, then as a professional agent, we can design a game plan around their specific situation about how we're gonna follow up with them. Now we're, now we're entering into a, a place where we're basically the, the follow-up is built in where now they're expecting that call, you know, in two days, ne tomorrow, next week. They're expecting the appointment. They're expecting all this. Because I think another big problem is, is we're talking to people and we're not really even listening to what's going on with them. We're just trying to set the appointment or we're just trying to get to the next step in the process. And we don't even talk about game plan necessarily. You know, like for example, somebody walks into your open house, you're talking to them, you know, you kind of get an idea of what they have going on. They're not really opening up to you, you know, so you don't really get deep into the conversation there. They leave, you got their contact information, you feel like you had a pretty good conversation, and then tomorrow, or two days later, you start trying to call and follow up and they don't answer your calls. You know, it's because we didn't, we didn't design that game plan around what they had going on and said, okay, well look, based on the fact that you wanna buy in three months because your daughter's gonna graduate high school in one month and you wanna downgrade, you don't need the extra bedroom, I need to maybe come by your house next week. What day's a good time? Or, you know, to price it. Or maybe I should call you in two days to set, you know what I mean? Like creating the game plan around their specific situation does two things. It makes them feel like you care about their specific situation. You're not just making them another number, right? And it creates rapport, it creates trust. And it also sets it up for their expectations of what the follow-up process is gonna look like for them. And so I think that's a big thing too. So I think not saying, hey, do you wanna buy or sell? Or hey, would you consider buying or selling? And then when they say no, handling the objections, you know, like, well, what if I could get you this? Would you sell then or this or that? I think that that's 1980s and people just don't wanna be sold. They can smell that a mile away. And so what we need to do is say, hey, look, <laughs> you need to approach it like, I'm not here to sell your house. I'm not here to try to sell you something or I'm not trying to get you to buy anything. I wanna know what I can do for you. Like, it doesn't matter to me what you don't wanna do. I wanna know what I can do to help you. I don't wanna know that you don't wanna sell your house. Not interested in that. I wanna know what I can do. I wanna know what you do want to do. And if nothing, Cool, is there an agent you would work with if you were to do something? No? Well look, I'm sure at some point in the future you're gonna do something at some point, maybe five or 10 years down the road, I don't know, you're gonna buy or sell a house at some point, right? Right. I would love to be that agent, you know, I'd love to work with you when that day comes. Would it be okay if I stayed in touch with you? 
Now we're gonna get their email and their cell phone number. So when we're asking for contact information, here's another quick little hack. When we're asking for contact information, don't just ask for the contact information. We want to ask them if it's okay to stay in touch before we ask for email addresses and phone numbers and all that stuff. Is it okay if I stay in touch with you? You, you, wanna, you wanna give them that personal feel. I wanna stay in touch with you. And then they're like, yeah, sure. Okay, cool. What's your what's your you know first name? What's your email address? What you know, what's a good email address for you? And just after that, after you understand the mechanics behind the philosophies of what we're trying to do, what we're trying to accomplish, because our main goal is to capture as many people as we can's contact information so that then we can take that contact information and use it to build our personal brand with those people. That's the goal. And so once you understand the philosophy behind what we're doing, and on top of the fact that closings happen every day, forever, like if you look in your MLS, they're happening right now. Closings are happening all around you. And so if you're talking to people and putting the work in, you're gonna run into people that wanna buy or sell properties today. But you're also building your business with this philosophy for now and the future at the same time. And this is how you build a big business, okay? We're talking, I'm talking big business here, not let's just get to, you know, two deals a month or even a hundred deals a year. I want to do 100 deals a year every year. And so this is how you do it. But once you understand all the philosophies behind it and you got the lingo down and you kind of understand what we're trying to do, now it's going to be a matter of how do we make people feel comfortable with us? Because it, you can understand the philosophies and the lingo, but if you haven't had a lot of person to person interaction, face to face, on the phone, even direct messaging and email, it's all kind of the same thing. We want to make people feel comfortable with us. And in the beginning, you may not be great at making people feel comfortable with you. And so that can be tough because you feel like you got the philosophy down, you got the lingo down and you're using it, but you're not getting any results. People aren't giving you their contact information and people are not opening up to you and telling you what they want to do and all this stuff. And you feel like you're doing something wrong or that this doesn't work. And the problem is, is that you have to keep going through that little stage and get to the part where, get to the next stage where you're using the right tone. And I call it FE, friend, family, effect, FE. And it's where you make every single person that you come in contact with feel like they're an extended part of your family. Um, you know, every single person you come in contact with should should have this feeling like, I've known this person forever. Like the, the FE is so important, it doesn't happen overnight. So what I want all of you to do is next time that you're talking to a friend or family member, okay? Mom, dad, brother, cousin, best friend from high school, as you're talking to them today, maybe even after this meeting, call your mom or your brother or cousin or son or daughter, and like have a short little five minute conversation with them. And I want you in the middle of that conversation to take a mental snapshot of, of that moment in time where they feel so comfortable with you and you feel so comfortable with them and the, the, the tone and the feeling and the calmness and your body language, your shoulders are relaxed, you're just relaxed. And I want you to take a mental snapshot and I want you to say to yourself, that's what Ricky was talking about. That feeling right there when you're talking to your, your family or friend. And I want you to start trying to implement that same and be, be that same person that you're talking to with your friend or family, with your prospects. I want you to take that same mentality, that same feeling, and I want you to, to try to emulate that when you're talking to your prospects. And so when you try this the first couple times, it's not gonna happen overnight, but you just gotta kinda keep working at it and just try to get a little bit better, a little bit better every time and get to where you're making people feel comfortable with you. The best way to make people feel comfortable with you, and that by the way, making people feel comfortable with you is your number one job as an agent, as a salesperson, as a human. It's your top priority because if you meet someone and they don't feel comfortable with you, they're not gonna do business with you. So yeah, our job is to close deals and get listings and you know do emails and 
you know, look up comps and go to appointments and, and, and all this stuff. But all that is basically a byproduct of you doing two things really well. Talking to a lot of people and making as many of them feel as comfortable as they can with you. If you can't get that part down, then we're not gonna get to the appointments and the closings and all the other things that we have to do to, to survive in the business. So we gotta get this part down and if we can get this part of it down, then everything else is gonna fall into place. So the best way to make someone feel comfortable with you is literally to feel comfortable with them.